either you stay in the matrix or you get out and end up creating your own. It becomes 50% of everything. We're actually spawning a, a new intelligence in the form of AI. It is a freedom money for those who are trying to get out of the, the fiat system. Is Bitcoin, in a sense, the connection between the physical and digital realm? Yeah, I, I, I think so. What I believe, like, is one of the notes I added to my prep after I sent them to you. Um, I realized that ideas come in waves, and some ideas stack on top of each other to make bigger waves. And I feel like right now, where like where we are in in life right now is at a, a crossroads or like um, there's a wave pattern that is intersecting. And so there's going to be this time where these two waves coming into each other, they're going to overlap. And in your, if you're a surfer on that wave, if you're right in the middle, you're going to get launched straight up because like the two peaks make one bigger peak. Um, or you can choose to get on either two sides of the waves. So if you're on the, the top on this side, you can transition to this wave and stay going this way. Or you could, through that intersection, get onto the other wave on the other side. But after that split happens, after you've gone past that initial split point, it's hard to go back because then you have to go back into the vocal point of basically like um, be in the crashing wave. And that is like the, the fiat world and the Bitcoin world are um, intersecting right now. There's there's a time for people to, to choose. Um, the, the longer they don't choose, uh, the further we're just simply going to be in, in time. And both ways will probably slightly dissipate. I mean, we have now um, with with the fiat world that comes in, and uh, we are kind of in a messy place right now. I feel like when we have fiat currencies, I don't know how many are there, hundred, sixty, or some. I don't know a lot of fiat currencies we have. Mm -hmm. uh, we even have like the the US dollars with a really dominant side, but we also have the Europe in in, in China and, and different fiat currencies going on. <laughs> So we are far away from like a singularity standpoint from like we, where we have one unit of account, where we have one base layer of, of our financial system. And I'm really big on this, this base layer idea. I really think that Bitcoin will be the base layer of our financial system and of, of our uh, human beings then, because whenever you have a transaction with someone else, 50% of that transaction, if it's not barter, it's money. Like, of course, you can mm -hmm. change, uh, like, I don't know, an, an, an keyboard for a mouse, <laughs> something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have two keyboards and the other one has two mouses. Uh, but uh, in most situations, it's more efficient to exchange with money. So if Bitcoin becomes 50% of everything. Um, and you talked about this, this, this vocal points and this, this, this waves clashing right now with the fiat world and, and the Bitcoin world. Um, let's, let's, before we get into how the world then looks, uh, uh, when, when we are in this, in this, in this Bitcoin world and what, what this could be when we are like in the singularity of Bitcoin, how mm -hmm. do we get there? Like, how do you, uh, wh what do you imagine happening before we get there? When we have this clashing point where you also said there's a lot, lot happening. I feel like mm -hmm. we are still in the early days where this clashing point is not there. How do you how do you see this coming, or what do you foresee coming? It all depends on a choice, really, and I think that's a choice each and every one of us has to has to make. Um, it's uh, almost like the Shakespearean uh, "to be or not to be." So the the two ways represent, in my opinion. Uh, two potential ways for uh, consciousness to continue. So the the digit digital world, um, we're 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 spawning and and 
we're actually spawning an, an, a new intelligence uh, in the form of AI. And um, the the cycle that that leads to is all, all the information that we uh, living, uh, whatever living actually means, um, <laughs> living consciousness is um, like the carbon side of things. Yeah, so the we we store our consciousness in in, in the stories we tell each other, and um, in the the carbon based world, um, we have kids and we explain the world to them, and they imagine then the new world that we all live in, and they do it to their children. So that's that's one uh, loop to be in uh, that is stable on its own. Um, it's always like you transition over to we're, we're going to store all the stories then from that storage of stories you can create an uh, AI algorithm that is sort of the, an imprint of this side which effectively if you look at what like in the, the movie The Matrix what that actually is is um, a digital version of the, the world that we live in um, that's based off of a copy of what people thought uh, at some point in the past. And um, kids that grow up start from being unconscious and taking in a lot of information and then becoming conscious. And an AI model, but language-based or like with visual inputs, does the same thing. But they're the the base layer is silicon, basically, and the uh, well, the human side, the reality side, sort of that we think is reality or base layer reality, is the more is the carbon based one, and um, they cycle into each other at this focal point, it, it, and is it possible that we like because you? Uh... Matrix is a really nice movie, and uh, I feel like the, that's that's the unofficial kind of a Bitcoin movie that everybody accepts as, as the Bitcoin movie, even though it has nothing to do with finances really, and nothing to do with, with Bitcoin really. I mean, it has a lot to do with Bitcoin and, and, and finances if you look closer. But in on the surface, if someone watches it, they're not immediately thinking of Bitcoin. Uh, only if you have the Bitcoin thing, then you're thinking of Bitcoin. Is it like? True. Is, is that that fiat system the the matrix and could or could it be that we actually live in kind of a matrix um either you stay in the matrix or you get out and end up creating your own um so if, if you if you like sort of the matrix is uh, a set of rules that we live by and whether that is uh initially set up by some kind of supercomputer uh, that imposes uh, the rules of the programming or whether that is uh, basically culture or history um, effective for the people who are living, it doesn't matter. Okay. So they, they, they grow up within a system that um, provides the rules for them. That is either childhood or uh, early adolescence um, or that is uh, figuring out what the matrix is and then realizing that you're in it. And um, that's basically the, the, the same thing, uh, learning about history and learning about like how, uh, how the world got to be and how people are. Um, that is the same thing as learning about the matrix. It's, it's the, the matrix is the world, is the world model you have and trying to step out is letting go of what you thought you knew and uh, letting go of a lot of people that you knew, of course, and stepping into basically a parallel universe uh, where you get to reimagine things. Um, but those, those machine, those things that you imagine there will form the matrix that is there. Um, because in a way you, you live in, you live in the in the world model that you create for yourself. And then in that way, the idea of manifestation really works as well. Uh, saying that 
whatever you believe about the world to be true, you end up creating in the world. And that 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 goes for 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 all good things and all bad things, probably. And maybe that's that's why a lot of uh, people before us have have said love is the answer. Um, lo, lo, love is definitely the answer. I think my third or fourth podcast was uh, a guy who said Bitcoin is actually love uh, because it's a system based on on trust and a system based on on uh, truth and integrity. Uh, but let's. Uh, Let's, let's focus maybe on how this matrix uh, that we are creating, and it's fascinating that uh, we, we, it's a nice thought that you to have that there, there's there's always a matrix that like always a set of rules, uh, and you can adopt your set of rules. And obviously, yeah. the feared set of rules are not so good for the individual. We have a lot of uh, imposing uh, things. They steal from inflation. Mm -hmm. They impose financial monitoring. Like yeah. They impose uh, surveillance a lot, uh, which also, also is a big part, uh, especially when now more and more is digital. Uh, then it's really interesting because Bitcoin is digital only, uh, but mm -hmm. it respects those, those, those individual rights better than, than other uh, as digital assets like the e euro the e mm -hmm. the fed coin whatever is 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 coming um how do you how do you see that when when we adopt all the the, the bitcoin uh, things and and we we kind of agree on on bitcoin as the singularity and we actually do this as a as a humanity uh, what what do you think will will change especially also on the, on those financial inclusion privacy on yeah. all the topics so because of the similarities between languages It is also creating sort of the, the base layer of communication. Re, like all those languages, human and animal, share share structure. And uh, that structure is sort of the, the core of reality that we live in. The the common denominator of of beliefs that people have. Um, there so like beliefs like there's something like up, there's something like down. Uh, There's something like left, right, like these are the the world that we live in is sort of based of what we as a collective belief. And if if you're in a dream, why why yet suppose if you have lucid dreams, you can control that dream almost completely and be really really intense in it. Um, the main difference between awake time and Uh, dream time is how many other consciousness are you sharing your dream with and in, in in your personal dream when you're sleeping you have full control of that dream therefore you basically in that tiny sphere you get to be god and have all all the influence but if you're in the the collective dream then whatever becomes reality is sort of the, the common denominator of all those dreams of all those people combined. And that's what we experience as reality. And in, in a way, Bitcoin is um, massively, well, literally electrifying um, that process. It's so sort of the, the spark Uh, basically in between those two hands uh, in the back. Um, that's where we humans realize um, our sovereignty and our creative potential. And what, what the fiat world does is it extracts that energy and gives it a uh, like drains it in some way and the um, AI technological world will do that in, in a similar way, but on a different level. Um, the, the fiat world will more extract, um, bo both will extract your time in a way uh, because you have to be in reality and spend your time there, or you can be online and spend your time there. And you're, you're going to fuel either of these two systems. And 
at some point there's going to be the the longer those two waves uh they're going to they're going to be intersecting for quite a long time um and it's 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 actually like surfing. Like you, you gotta try to ride the edge, um, and not fall off uh, off the back, uh, or get stuck into uh, into the crash in the middle. Um, I think the the world is just going into a really exciting uh, period, and the on either which side of that divide you're gonna be, you're gonna be either more focused on. Uh, anonymity. I think that's the more the, the digital world, or there's there's two kinds of anonymity. Like in the real world, you when you introduce yourself to someone, there is massive anonymity uh, because unless you're really well known, um, and being really well known in the small community is really quite different than being well really well known through the amplifier that is the internet. Um, so sort of what the, the internet does is it amplifies the, in the rate of exchange of information massively. Um, like me being able to talk to you now and, ex- and exchange that information um, can, can only be done at this rate through the internet. Um, it's a step function in how much more information is being exchanged compared to like a thousand years ago. So, and it also matches with like the rate of progress, like the faster information is exchanged, um, more ideas will be mixed and faster new ideas will, will come to the surface because they're simply, um, multiple bubbles that are ideas that collapse onto each other and create one bigger bubble that's going to be rising faster than the bubbles around them. Um, But eventually all the bubbles um, will burst and you'll get the the, the end sort of that entropy unless you find something that shakes things up quite a bit. And um, there's, there's many, many different ways that is going to happen in in the future, um, but we also need like the the mix ups because as soon as everything gets to a steady state, um, then there's no real interesting interaction happening. It's like having like a glass of water with oil on top. Um, if there's just water and oil, and you leave it be, there's nothing really interesting happening. But if you start mixing it up real well, then for a while, there's going to be a lot of interaction. And it's that interaction that is interesting. But it's also basically the interaction between people, um, exchanging information. Um, I go here, you go there, why this, that, the other. Um, but that's just if you have like two liquids, water and oil. But the, the more different stuff you start adding to it, um, the more complexity there gets to be and the more different kinds of experiences there get to be. Like it's, um, it's like maybe like 20 years ago, there was this, this game I played online where you were initially given like the four, four base, uh, substances. And by selecting them, you could recombine them into something new. And they could recombine something else, create something new again, and basically that's what we're what we've been doing as as humans, recombining things that we understand in in novel ways, um, and sometimes rarely uh, come up with something new. It's it's the ideas. So this this is sort of the an idea of I've been playing with. What if the world that we get to experience is uh, created by the ideas that we're able to explain thoroughly enough that other people be- get to believe that that reality could be true. So take the, the thought experience that Albert Einstein did that led him to finding the equation for trans, uh, from transition from energy to matter. 
that created the idea for later for for the atom bomber for nuclear energy and all of that um, and whole new sort of paradigm of world of being opened up stemming from that single idea and I think Bitcoin is an idea on the on that same level. It is saying how could we store energy and transmit energy across vast distances and time um, without involving um, physical goods, basically in the in the inter in the in the transact in the uh, in the exchange of that energy, like the medium is uh, with Bitcoin is technology, um, but the thing that's actually exchanged is mostly information, and that's a a, a new sort of base layer in a way for for consciousness. We'll see what happens. It's it's. It, it's a fascinating thought. I, ne I never thought it that way. Um, I see Bitcoin in a lot of different ways to so <laughs> deal with you, um, which also the thought that I also had when we have uh, the concept of creating value uh, and creating something. Uh, it's it's fascinating to see the, the, the difference between the digital and the physical realm and the interconnection between those uh, and uh, especially the, the dream example was also quite quite nice of, of you when you're all collecting collectively dream of something uh, and this more and more people start dreaming of Bitcoin uh, and and first it was like just one guy Satoshi and then he dreamed of Bitcoin it could be something uh, yeah. and then there was like how Finney then there are like more and more people coming into the scene of, of dreaming about Bitcoin and then like only shortly after uh, Satoshi Nakamoto like uh, only shortly after Bitcoin was uh, created Satoshi Nakamoto uh, left died whatever uh, but he's not there anymore he doesn't support it anymore like the mm -hmm. first one that has a dream is really quickly gone usually when someone has a dream he has to really be hard working to keep the dream alive if i for mm -hmm. example uh, stop that podcast there will be no P robin sire podcast tomorrow <laughs> because yeah. no, nobody else will uh make another robin sire podcast i mean there, there will be another bitcoin podcast that will maybe have a similar thing but it will not be the, the same thing if you build a company sure. you have to really work hard to to keep that thing alive um uh, long term and maybe you are able to create something great so so big that it lives beyond yourself like steve jobs made with apple uh, but he mm -hmm. had to work a lot and there were a lot of people already involved when he died uh and they had yeah. invested interest in in bitcoin it was like it was really soon when he went like really 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 soon mm -hmm. and it's fascinating that the dream transferred to all the physical uh beings um yeah it's just just the thought that i had in, in in my mind when 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 you talked about uh bitcoin for me the, the topic that i want to now get is like creating value because uh, mm -hmm. it's so easy these days to destroy something like there's an old building yes. to destroy it and there's a new modern building coming up that looks way uglier than before uh then there's like oh we got it with the i, I don't want to get get into politics but there was this this uh, movement where they in europe they they threw orange things on on beautiful paintings they even like cut it sometimes and stuff like that like, yeah this is those are amazing artworks that took long long times and really it's a lot of resentment work. uh and and they, they they put a lot of work into that artwork and then it got yeah. just deleted in, in, in seconds mm -hmm. um which i thought now is like when we have bitcoin could that change how we create value because all of a sudden we we are not in this feared thing where value seems to be not of value like everything that we're doing right now is like ah we we can 
just replace it tomorrow. There, there's no lo mm. long lasting thing these days. Yeah. But when we exchange the base layer, could, could that change or what, in what way changes that things? So yeah. On? I think that the, the fiat model, um, works as a sort of as a religion. Uh, like people sometimes say about Christianity that it's, um, uh, uh, the, the opioid for the masses to like, as a way to distract people from the fact that they're going to die at some point. And, um, that, that allows people to say unconscious. Um, but having to reckon with the idea that you're going to die at some point into the future, um, put so much more emphasis on the now, um, because it makes you realize that you can't, nothing's going to happen. Nothing in the past you can change and nothing in the future, um, is, is going to matter more than now. Um, and I think that what, what Bitcoin, uh, does because it, um, so elegantly, um, ties time to value and the, um, sovereign, like the sovereign exchange of value created, um, I think is the sort of a, a keystone to the, the whole, um, basically the whole value hierarchy. Um, like in, in the fiat model, um, because of like all the interactions that, um, international banks and so again, like what people are, and that spawns sort of the, the news and advertising because it, it needs, the system needs to be propped up, propped up, propped up. Um, but it's a, a system that is based on a lack of self sovereignty. It is putting something above, uh, Everything else, in that case, um, the, the the money, the the fiat money. Um, in, in Bitcoin, it is like for now, it's an opt in. Um, it is a freedom money for those who are trying to get out of the the fiat system. Um, but like I said, for for our children, uh, if if Bitcoin is uh, successful, um, Bitcoin is going to be their fiat money. Because they've never experienced money they can choose. Uh, so they'll see Bitcoin as fiat because uh, the parents say it is money. And um, in a way, uh, Bitcoin is uh, rock pulling the, the fiat world. Um, and I presume that at some point in the future, uh, our children are going to be rock pulling every 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 adult who is um, no longer awake enough to uh, get with the times. Um, and I think it's it's conscious adults that are um, humble enough to listen to their children um, that are going to succeed. Like people who are like you, you said the idea of um, if you decide not to do the Roman Sayer uh, podcast anymore, there's not going to be a Roman Sayer podcast. And the the world that other people get to experience is created by the few people who uh, are actually creating the experiences. And I think the beautiful thing about the about Bitcoin is it um, it's rewarding uh, in a really elegant way those who are creating uh, the the experiences others get to have. Um, While it's almost like a, a rising tide lifts all boats. Um, that that that's what uh, what Bitcoin feels like to me, uh, because it is uh, reducing the cost of anything to the marginal cost of production, uh, which means that if you do work for a set amount of value in the now, um, over time, because uh, the 
people just get better at doing stuff. And that is going to be more valuable into the future. And if it's like, um, like an, an honest system, because if I add something positive to you, your life now, or you to, you to mine, um, that is going to have a ripple effect into my future. That if that um, that nudge that you got of me or I got of you is a positive one, let's assume it is, um, because well, that's all we can do, right? Um, is the earlier I get in time, I get that nudge, the more valuable it's going to be to me to get that nudge. So me paying you in Bitcoin is going to reflect the fact that if I pay that now and Bitcoin's value grows over time, that the earlier I've uh, spent that time with you, spent my Bitcoin, my time with you, um, the better, because the growth starts happening earlier. Whereas if you delay that moment longer and longer and longer, um, you, you start uh, compounding simply later. It, it, it seems the like the value that can be created yeah. out of the interactions that you have with the people around you. If you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing how to buy bitcoin it's simple have a bitcoin only exchange don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that be on a bitcoin only exchange i use 21 bitcoin 21 bitcoin is for me the best partner for that and now where do you store bitcoin bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet on a self custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet so that's my simple solutions. That's a bit box. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. One last thing before we get back to the video. I'm really passionate about meeting other Bitcoiners. And there's an amazing opportunity in the middle of Europe in June, the Bitcoin Prague Conference. It's the best and biggest Bitcoin only conference in whole of Europe. For all Americans, please visit Europe and visit this place in June. For all Europe's, it's a must go anyways. You are so close to the Bitcoin Prague conference, you basically have to come. I will do interviews there and I would love to meet you all there. Use code ROBIN for all my sponsors to get discounts and use the links down in the description. Yeah, absolutely. And it it seems like Bitcoin and time is so interconnected these days. Like uh, mm -hmm. it, it will be even more interconnected once Bitcoin. Uh, and, and and it's funny how how we can look at at Bitcoin even as it would have it would be time. Um, uh, you you sent me some things that you you might want to talk about before, and you put not only the date from the day, you put also the time chain. Uh, on, on there, which is, is, is for me fascinating that more and more Bitcoiners are actually adopting this kind of uh, time chain uh, thing. There are even people that when they get married, they uh, write the block when they got married on their wedding ring, which is a fascinating mm -hmm. time concept. Uh, and and I, if, <laughs> if I orange pill my my girlfriend enough i i might also consider doing this uh if if if, if she's okay with that um we'll be we'll see um but is if 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 the value the most valuable thing humans have is time and second to that i think is like bitcoin uh mm -hmm. is, is the interconnection on the time chain with bitcoin just just a matter of time come again <laughs> uh, it, it was a lot of times but uh when when you have bitcoin and time being the most valuable like for me time is the most valuable thing uh, and mm -hmm. time is like the highest thing that you can exchange for something uh that's yeah. why when when you say oh uh, I, I i give time uh, to my family i give time to 
to people I love, this is actually something meaningful and it, it's way more valuable than an actual gift. Like if you have like some, some gift that you thought of and, and then a gift. And that's why I think also people value gifts that come from the heart more than just material things that you just bought from some random store yeah. and you make it yourself or it's really thoughtful because they know you, you've thought about that. You spend time on that gift. And it's you spend more, love. You spend love, you spend time on there uh, and it's more valuable. Um, when you have now this thought, okay, we have time, it's really valuable. And then we have Bitcoin that kind of represents time and you also like made the time chain can this actually happen that Bitcoin not only exchanges the the unit of account and store of value, but also exchanges our time system, like the, the time, the to block be. to be? Yeah. Well, um, if the idea is true that um, we live in our, imagina our collective imagination, um, then what is sort of the, the cycle of uh, imagining what this world is like? So when you first become conscious, you start seeing like differences between light and dark. Um, then like sound, no sound. Um, and maybe when you're, when you're a toddler, you start learning about like up, down, uh, above, over, top. Like you're, you're building... Um, a world model and initially when you when you when people first become conscious they they are the center of the universe um because everything they know is all there is basically um and then people by this even like the simple game of, uh, of peekaboo um we get introduced to the idea of uh, object permanence. That's basically where time starts. Um, and we initially live on like a, a 2D plane uh, when we're like, when we're maybe we're able to roll, like when we're like still like really, really small, we're, we're in a 2D plane where we have an ability to, to roll, slightly popping to like the third dimension. Um, then at some point we we start standing up or start moving around. We start exploring, like actually moving in this first two D and then three D world. Um, but the the concept of time and days passing that is there. There's been some experience with people like going to a cave and then like. Um, going to bed and going sleeping when when they feel like it that leads for uh, each person to a slightly different natural rhythm and i think the um the the reason why sort of the the earth keeps rotating in a way is imagine we you start off with a with a world where there is where you actually have a flat earth and each individual on that flat, initially thought of as flat plane, thinks that they're the center of the universe. Because we all grow up that way. Um, or at least if our parents uh, are really uh, car caring and nurturing, then we, we experience being the center of the universe. Uh, but add a lot of dots together that all think that they're the center of the universe. The only way is, there's a couple ways to solve that. Because each dot is going to be an equal distance sort of away from everything else. Um, and a way to solve that is simply to make a sphere because that way each dot is the center of the universe, at least to them. Um, but if everyone has their own like sleep-wake cycle, um, it's hard to do stuff together. So the only way to like be able to like interact often with with people is to make sure that you're awake at the same time and that you're sleeping at the same time. Well, people get into small clusters that sync up their uh, sleep-wake cycle, and that's going to spread like like uh, ink blobs because you got to choose. You want you want to be awake when other people are also awake. 
Otherwise, there's nothing happening. You're all by your own. And that will start forming a wave around that circle, around that sphere that was simply created by the fact that we all think they were center of the universe. And now all of a sudden, we have created from our own imagination a, a day-night cycle that works for everyone on, that, on the sphere because everyone syncs up to the common denominator in terms of uh, what the, the natural rate should be. So in a way, we imagine the Earth to be as a collective, and then we get to inhabit it. And it is the people who are imaginative enough to think of new ways of being and actually creating them uh, is that the world that we get to experience actually gets to be. Wow, that's it's a big concept, and it's. Uh, I feel like we we're talking uh, deep, but I think we are also just scratching the surface on this. Topic. Oh yes, <laughs> it's it's fascinating to to to, to think about those. <laughs> those things um as we're coming already closer to the to the one hour mark uh and there are so many more questions i, I want to get in but uh, i guess uh it's it's, the time. It, it's 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 uh uh it's also fair to like make at some point a, a, a second round to that but there are some things that i i want to get into uh before we end it um you mentioned in one uh tweet uh uh, a, a guy that I never heard of before. So I was like curious and I just quickly Googled him. Uh, Alexander Solhensi. Uh, Solzhenitsyn, uh, yeah. So, yeah, Solzhenitsyn. Um, and you like kind of uh, made the, the comparison uh, to, to Satoshi Nakamoto. First of all, who, who is he and how, how does he relate? Uh, just uh... Okay, yeah. So uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, um, I may have some of my facts wrong here, so give me but the general premise will be will be okay um was uh, a writer in uh soviet russia and um he is uh he he wrote a book the gulag archipelago uh which was about the sort of the work camps that were erected in soviet russia um during well during that period and um a period where people had to conform their speech to to the collective in order to survive basically um in a way similar to what we have now um like in the in that period as, as well as uh, in uh, uh occupied uh, germany um uh, yeah just a lot of people like informing on each other and um the the message that from the Soviet Union towards the rest of the world was uh, we've ushered in the utopia and uh, look at us it's, we're doing so great but on the inside it was uh, well repression and uh, control and what his book has has done is he was in his book he simply not simply, he wrote about all the uh, omniscient, omniscience of truth and the distortions of reality that each and everyone in that nation um, got involved with that would create the system that they all hated together because they weren't allowed to... Um, Because, because they had ushered in the, the utopia, um, saying that you were hurt in some way uh, was not allowed. Because how can you be hurting when you're living in the utopia? But there has to be something wrong with you because there cannot be something wrong with the utopia that we've created. Um, so in order to keep the, that false utopia alive, uh, the utopia had to sacrifice people. Um, and that book is basically a, a massive, like, I don't know, even know how many pages that is, but it's a, a so many thousand page scream. I think I'm paraphrasing this from uh, Jordan Peterson, like a 
400 page stream about what was going on. And I, in a way I relate that to Satoshi Nakamoto with the white paper and, um, both these individuals, um, created a signal or a lens through which to see uh, the world they were experiencing. And in Alexander Solzhenitsyn's case, that led to the fall of the Soviet Russia. Um, and in our time, uh, the introduction of the, the Bitcoin protocol, um, could be the, the end of fiat money. And both are about introducing, reintroducing honesty. In Anasolar Solzhenitsyn's book, he sort of realized that it is all the lies that people tell themselves about what is good instead of uh, looking towards themselves and fix themselves that allows that sort of tyranny to come to be. And as soon as people are willing to um, seek the problems in the world in themselves instead of in others, um, we start, and, and that is basically the appetite of um, sovereignty, I'd say, saying that the the world that I experience is, is, is a result of my actions instead of pointing the finger. Um, but the second you point the finger and saying, what I experience is your fault, then you're also basically saying that um, I'm not sovereign, you are. And so basically the, the, the choice that people are left with is, um, are they going to take the, the path of complaining about the world around them and, and not doing shit and being unhappy about it to, or are they going to choose to um, do the work on themselves and like in the, in the other world um, take responsibility for their lives and actually create a, a beauty. It's like the belief in the idea that if people actually put their their energy in the right place, we can actually create something beautiful. And I'm not saying that we're going to issue in the issue in the utopia, uh, because the utopia is never where you are, but also always the place that you're trying to get to. And um, I think the the correcting mechanism that we humans have create created is children. Because they're definitely honest. And if you're, as an adult, willing to listen to someone who knows very, very, very little and um, actually trying to make the world you see a better place for those who are coming to be instead of those who are, um, then I think we uh, have, a, have a chance of creating something immensely beautiful and fulfilling. That's, uh, I think, the most beautiful way to to get to our end routine with with those sentences. Wow, I, I love it a lot, uh, and especially also with the utopia. Uh, I've I have to rewatch this podcast a lot to to fully digest what you're saying. It's it, I, I love your ideas and your deep thoughts. Uh, it's it's definitely a, a different episode that we had today, uh, and and there's a, a lot to unpack there. Um, before we get to our end routine, uh, I'm really ca uh, passionate about uh, asking that question, um, what you are currently passionate about besides uh, what we talked about on the podcast, like besides the financial system, besides uh, uh, Bitcoin, like is there anything that you're currently uh, or recently really passionate about or learning or deep investigating right now? Um I think I'm a lot about connecting people right now, connecting people and ideas um, and both setting. What I'm trying to align myself with is um, 
sort of the the straight like a, a path that aligns with having the most amount of people um, experiencing a, a meaningful a meaningful life. And I'm not saying like a, a life without hardships because I think the hardships definitely part of, part part of creating that meaning. I see my role sometimes as simply be a guide, and um, it also feels really fulfilling. It's the, I think it's the most fulfilling thing that you can possibly do. It's like. The, the the few podcast episodes where people uh, comment like a really long feedback where they're saying like oh this this one thing that you said or like this this episode or the thing that the a guest said this resonated with me and it, it changed that part of my life and stuff like that there, there's like often really long things coming back uh, mm -hmm. this one uh, comment is for me so much more fulfilling then when a podcast just goes viral and a lot of people like discussing yeah. uh, meaningless or seemingly meaningless things uh, in the comment section, um, all the, 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 it's just uh, quality like, over quantity. Uh, uh, it's like, uh, that's, that it's really cool to, to see. I mean, I, I'm kind of on the quantity side with my podcast because I do, I do it every day, <laughs> but just yeah. because I'm really uh, passionate about just, um, speaking with as many people as possible and, and getting also outside of my small bubble or like at least expand the bubble <laughs> that I have yeah. around me. Uh, and I can never do that when I have uh, once a, a week or once a month a podcast episode with uh, a guest that I search nicely uh, because I, I, I get like two free requests that from people that want to be on the podcast on it maybe not weekly but maybe like every week one or something like that it, it it's averages out it, it gets more and more as as the as the uh, podcast grows and uh and also when you have every day a podcast you have to not only depend on people asking for podcast i also have to search for people uh, mm -hmm. but imagine the same thing where I don't have like seven podcasts, but just one podcast in a week, which mm -hmm. is like only one seventh of the, 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 the amount. Then there are not a lot of like, then I can really choose my own bubble, really narrow it down. Like I, I yeah. probably only speak with people I agree with. I only speak with people that, that I like. I only speak with people that, seems interesting uh, unless you consciously go the other way like that you're true. already conscious of that risk so you could also um be really selective um but also be selective in picking ideas that you think you don't agree with and not to correct that person but to figuring out um what assumptions in you had to change for their uh, perspective to be the more truthful one yeah that's 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 very true i, I mean it's, it's like whether you're whether the path you're on is confirmation bias or actually trying to um con nudge yourself towards uh, the center position again yeah i guess i guess with with, with more episodes it's easier uh because you 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 are forced to find more uh and, and you research more like to f find more guests and uh but if you're conscious about it uh you can do the same thing even if you have just once a month the same thing uh yeah. I, I guess it's just like uh easier for me in my situation because i i force myself into into this discipline yeah. but let's let's get into the the end routine uh, of of the podcast uh where the the previous guest is asking a question uh, for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is uh, and your question an, an interesting one uh, what would you do to get more women involved in bitcoin um I, sometimes i i see um us people and, and men as well uh, men and women as as gardeners if we if we create a beautiful garden um that is nurturing to life then more life will get to that garden. That being 
all sorts of creatures. And the, the care we put into the environment that we create um, will draw in uh, the most amazing creatures. And that can be uh, a woman creating a really nice space for a man to stumble into and realizing, hey, this is something that I really want to stay close to um, because it's so nurturing. But it can also be uh, a man creating uh, some sort of um, beautiful system um, that uh, some woman uh, feels like being really comfortable in. And I think it's the, the things that we create attract um, what matches with what we have created. So if you if you're doing like traditional agriculture, uh, you create a lot of the same, um, and that becomes sort of stale. Um, if you put in a lot of effort and, and having a a garden that's really well taken care of. And all sorts of creatures will flourish there. And both both are types of abundance. One in a sheer number uh, of the same thing, and the other in um, number of different things. And I think it's for each and every one of us to figure out where on that spectrum we would like to be. How much sameness do you want? Do you are, are you comfortable with, and how much um, chaos and uh, constantly changing? I love that answer. Uh, it's it's. I, f I feel like if if we get an answer from from every guest that ever was on, this would have been the most uh, unique one. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, uh, I love the way you think. Um, before I let you go, um, is there anything you want to add to those, today's episode? Uh, and uh, where can uh, people, if they have questions to what we talked about, where can people uh, find you in, in the best way or ask you questions in the best way? Yeah. Um, last bit first, uh, people could find me on Twitter or uh, Noster. Um I'll, I'll share the handles with you so you can add them in if you want to. And anything I'd like to add to the conversation, um, I just want to say thank you for, for hosting. And um, one one question that I maybe want to ask you or you could ask to, to the next person is um, what's, the def what's the definition of done? Like the word done, then it's that it's finished. Uh, yeah, and like one one of the notes I I made is like people are always um, talking about the revolution, um, and in a way, that's what people are doing with Bitcoin now as well. Um, but the the more important stuff, it's not the revolution itself; it's what comes after, and most people tend to not think about that because they're just getting too excited about the revolution itself. And then, but if you continue thinking after that revolution, then you'll probably realize that um, the, the matrix that you just destroyed is going to be replaced by the matrix that you'll end up creating yourself. Mm. Um, in a way that's like, um, I haven't, I've seen the, the first two movies of the, the Dune series before and I've heard of the, the entire series. It's the some way in some ways the perspective that uh, nothing is ever really changing. Uh, it's just that whoever is uh, on top in that system is what changes. Um, and in in a way that is sort of what, what Bitcoin is also sort of doing. It's like replacing an old base layer with a with a new one claiming that it's better um and whether it is or not is uh only only time will tell um but it will be better in some ways and probably worse in some others and that's for the next generation to flick uh, to fix and flip back into the other direction and by sort of going from left to right weaving trying to stay somewhat 
towards a, a straight and narrow. Um, we'll be uh, weaving for a long time, um, weaving our lives together and um, sharing experiences such as this one. So thank you. Uh, th thank you for, for, for being on and I'm already curious uh, what, what my next guest will, will ask, uh, will answer with, for, for this question. Uh, it's, it's, it seems like there, there, there can be the situation where you really strive for something that's never been done. Uh, and, and you strive just for that and then you will never be like at the, at the end point, uh, which keeps you motivated, but also in a sense like, uh, un unsatisfied with the, the outcome, uh, kind of, a, it's, it's interesting to say, uh, thank you for the conversation. Thank you, Robin.